Hello. My name is David Cavill, and I'd like to demonstrate to you how unreliable statistics can be and why many of the figures quoted in the recent programme, Pedigree Dogs Exposed, are unreliable. The programme flung statistics about, like the cream pies in an early silent movie. I was told that the programme had been meticulously researched. If this was the case, some indication of how unreliable statistics actually are should have been included. It is not just that they are subject to misinterpretation, but the different ways of collecting data which go to make up the final figures can be so very different, the results are almost always incompatible with other conclusions. You can read the text of this talk, incidentally, at http colon forward slash forward slash davidcavillwordpress.com. As an example of how inaccurate statistics can be, let us look at the number of dogs that are estimated to reside in Britain. The Pet Food Manufacturers Association, PFMA, states that in their latest survey there are 7.3 million dogs in the UK. They say 75% of those dogs are pedigree dogs, although they don't define whether that means those dogs are actually registered with the Kennel Club. 11% are crossbreeds and 14% are mixed breeds. My immediate reaction is that 7.3 million is not a realistic figure and that 75% being pedigree dogs is very unlikely. Why do I think this? Well, the PFMA researchers also asked where the dog owners obtained their pets. 16% said from a private advert in a newspaper, 7% from a pet shop, 8% through the internet, 25% from a friend and 16% from a dog breeder. The rest, 32% said, from a rescue centre. Now this is where the high total may actually come from. The number of puppies available from rescue centres is actually very low and as most dogs are adult before coming up for rescue many would be counted twice and some might be recycled several times. What is more, dogs from a rescue centre are allocated a breed by the staff so many who look a bit like say a border terrier or a border collie would be counted as pedigree even if they had no papers. There is more. In 2007, the Kennel Club registered getting on for 271,000 puppies. In relation to 7.3 million, this means that the registered pedigree dog population is about 43%. This is a long way short of 75%. There will, of course, be many dogs which are classified as having a pedigree by their owners even though they are not Kennel Club registered. But is it likely that they comprise 32% of the canine population. A much less scientific method is to observe the dogs appearing at your local veterinary surgeon, surgery, but I suspect it might be more accurate. You will find that the number of pedigree dogs compared to mongrels is about 50-50, and this probably reflects the proportion of pedigree crossbred dogs in the country as a whole. It's certainly much closer to the uh, registered dogs on the Kennel Club register. If there are, in fact, about 7 million dogs and the average life of a dog is, say, 12 years, the Kennel Club survey suggested that of the 30,000 dogs in their report into canine morbidity in 2004, the average age was 11.3 years. This means that approximately 600,000 puppies are born each year and, of course, 600,000 dogs die. Let's look at the way the dogs which die each year. We've seen that this is likely to be around 600,000. It is likely that most die or are put to sleep because of infirmity or old age. We can have no way of knowing how many are put down because of illness when they're not old, but we do have some figures put out by the RSPCA and the Dogs Trust about dogs put to sleep unnecessarily. The RSPCA's latest figures for 2007 say that they put about 6,000 dogs to sleep for humane medical reasons, i.e. they were ill or old, and just over a thousand were put down because they could not be rehomed, i.e. they were likely to be a danger to the community. As a proportion of the total number of dogs handled by the RSPCA, this is not unreasonable. Putting a dog to sleep is regrettable, of course, but it does not seem an unreasonable figure, although it is seriously at odds with the headline-grabbing press releases sometimes put out by that organisation, which incidentally added £23 million to its reserves in 2007. Dogs Trust began its own stray dogs report about five years ago. 
This report says that in 2007 nearly 100,000 strays were collected by local councils, of which 6,700 were put to sleep for want of a home. That's an average of 18 each day, but it also means that over 92,000 were, presumably, safely returned to their owners or were still in the care of the local authority at the end of the year. Quite how these figures are collected is unclear, as in general Dogs Trust does not take in strays collected by dog wardens, although when they have room and the dog is rehomeable, uh, they may take dogs in after the seven-day period. On the other hand, some RSPCA centres do take um, dogs in from dog wardens, um, as do Battersea and the city-based dogs homes such as Birmingham and Manchester. So again, some of the dogs might well be counted twice. Of course, no one has yet begun to define what all these terms mean, and each organisation has different methods of compiling the figures, so it's virtually impossible to work out what the proportion of strays there are in any given year, what proportion of those strays are put to sleep because no home is available, and precisely what proportion of dogs are killed compared to the number who die naturally are, or are humanely put to sleep to save them pain or stress. There's no doubt there are problems with a proportion of dogs in society, but defining that proportion is extraordinarily difficult. How much more difficult is it then to collect meaningful statistics about genetic abnormalities? The Kennel Club's research into the reasons why dogs die makes almost no mention of genetic disease. And this is because, by and large, genetic diseases are not in themselves life-threatening. If they were, they wouldn't be there in any case as the dogs would die before they could reproduce. We can certainly identify many genetic conditions, but because they are identified does not mean they are necessarily debilitating. In fact, some may be little more than an inconvenience. Many humans live with being short-sighted, have mild allergies, asthma or a hard of hearing, all of which have a genetic component with little or no inconvenience. The Cavalier King Charles, which went best in show at the Cavalier King Charles Championship show, might well have some indication of disease on a CAT scan, but it looked calm and composed, and cannot be compared to the poor creature shown on the programme, which was clearly in considerable distress. In its introduction to its purebred dog health survey in 2004, the Kennel Club says, the results of this survey, and particularly the breed-specific analysis, should be interpreted with caution. This sensible warning was totally ignored by the Pedigree Dogs Exposed programme, if it was even looked at. Almost all the statements in the programme were vague, up to, estimated, probably, and may, were words attached to almost every figure. The statement, for instance, that up to 30% of Cavalier King Charles Spaniels may have the condition is not inaccurate in itself, but as the Kennel Club's estimate is that the condition probably affects about 2% of the breed, it is hugely distorted. What we do know is that one of the most knowledgeable geneticists in the world of dogs, Dr Malcolm Willis, has stated categorically that the inbreeding coefficient in the UK pedigree dog population as a whole is in the region of 4%, and that less than 1% is the result of a parent-to-parent -parent offspring mating that is a breeding, inbreeding coefficient of 25%. To put this in perspective, a cousin-to-cousin -cousin alliance, which is not at all uncommon in this country and overseas, has an inbreeding coefficient of just 6.25%. These are the facts. So any statistics should be handled with care. Perhaps all summaries of figures should have a government health warning. <laughs>